Hi everyone, my name is Arik from Lauren B and we're back again for another episode of Diamonds 101. This one is called Pushing It to the Limit. Now diamond shopping would be very easy if you had an unlimited budget and can just pick the highest quality, largest carat size stone you can find without any price limitations. However, most of us, that's just not possible. So finding the best ways to maximize value for the center stone is key. Pushing the limits of quality and even size are ways you can achieve this. And on this episode of Diamonds 101, we're gonna give you some insider tips on what you can do. So let's start off with clarity. Now clarity, if you can't see it, does it really matter? That's kind of my motto and uh, what we try to go by. So clarity refers to internal inclusions within a stone, natural blemishes within this, in the surface or within the stone itself. Now of the four C's, this is very hard to comprehend because there's so many types of inclusions. There's different ways that they can show themselves, different colors and have differing effects on the stone. Now some people just don't want to hear it and they just want something that's flawless or VVS or really high clarity where there's even under a microscope you won't be able to find it but for most they're willing to go down on the clarity scale and try to push the boundaries a little bit to find the right stone that could be at a good price have inclusions but be eye clean now finding that right one is very difficult and something that you should always have a visual on and you can't go by the GIA report alone now let's start with these two diamonds over here can you see the difference Probably not. And even if I'm in person and looking at them as a trained professional, looking at them face up, it'll be very difficult for me to see any difference between these two stones in terms of clarity is concerned. Now, you would be surprised to find out that this one here is a VS2 rated stone, which is in the very slightly included range. And this one is all the way down in the SI2 range. So that's three grade difference for something that you can't see. And there's gonna be about a 3000 price difference for stones of this size, which is around 1.7 carats. Now I don't need to show you this VS2, but I'm going to take this SI2 stone and I'm going to put it under the microscope so you can get a little bit of a clearer look into the stone here. But you can see very clearly if you would see any kind of black dot or crystal or inclusion, it would show up right away. So this is a very good SI2. It's very eye clean and makes for a beautiful center stone of an engage ring and comes at a very good value for that reason. Now I'm going to take you over to another stones that we have laid out here. We have first up a two carat oval, also SI2, F color. Now I'm not gonna show you this under a loop because I'm gonna show you on the computer a very zoomed in video of the stone. So you can go by the GIA report a little bit, which we pulled up on the screen. It's a 2.01 F color. You see the clarity grade SI2. Now each diamond comes with a plot which shows you where all the inclusions are located. So this one has a favorable plot. Most of the inclusions are off to the side. They look scattered. So it's most likely gonna be an eye clean diamond. Now you still need to get the visual on it. So I'm gonna show you how this diamond looks in up close view and you'll see it's true to life. It has a little bit of an inclusion on the side over there, which you won't be able to see in person and the center is completely clean. So here the GI report and the plot live up to its name. Now we're gonna go back over here to show you another stone. And this is also an SI2 diamond. This is an F color SI2 pear shaped diamond that weighs 1.9 carats. Again, we're focusing on the clarity here, but you can see it's a beautiful stone. It's very crisp with the sparkle. Everything looks great about it. Now, let's go back again to our GI reports. I'm gonna pull up the report for the pear shape. Now, this one looks different than the oval. Why is that? Because it does have more inclusion showing in the center of the stone. So now, if you only went by this plot and you didn't see the stone, you might just count it out and say, forget about it. it looks like it's not gonna be clean. It has a lot of things going on here. It might not be pretty to the eye, but Believe it or not, if we go over to the video of this stone, this is that exact pear shape, the one I showed you before. This is very, very zoomed in, over 10 times magnification at any little spot. You can see some scattering of inclusions around the stone, but again, it's white, they're transparent, and they blend in very well with the stone. So you're not gonna see that. This is a very, very good SI2, and you're gonna save a lot of money by going down to SI2 and getting something that's eye clean. Now, while we're talking about that, I'm gonna do one more comparison here on the screen. I wanna show you a bad SI2. This is one we would never have in stock. I'm just pulling it up from a website. And not only does it have a black crystal right there, you can see that, you would definitely see that with the naked eye, but it's also reflecting throughout the stone. So you see that black dot is here, it's there, it's all over because it's hitting all the facets and reflecting throughout. Now, if I looked at the GI report for this one, which we won't do, you might just see one big spot over here. You might not think too much of it, but then you see it in person and that one little spot is showing all around the stone. I just flip it on its back. You can see it there. You'll see it from the side. You see it, see it's going all over the place. So that's something you definitely want to avoid. So now all those things are taken into account when a gemologist grades a stone. They look at all the inclusions where they're located and then they give it the grade. 
The problem is that in SI range, it's very broad. So an SI1 can be very good, or an SI2 in the, for that matter, and an SI1 or SI2 can be very bad, like the last example that we just showed you. So that's something that you have to keep in mind when you see two stones that have the same exact color, clarity, and weight, and one stone is noticeably less expensive than the other, it means something is probably wrong with it, and it's probably attributed to the clarity and not being eye clean, or maybe it's hazy or milky, and it's not the best deal that it looks like. So always keep an eye out for anything like that, any wide variances in prices, because they do happen within the clarity, same clarity range. Now, even with that in mind, I wanna show you, I'm gonna go down even lower on the range. This is actually a I1 diamond. We don't sell too many of these because I1 is lower on the chart. It's the lowest that will go and we rarely go into this range. But I just wanna show you how clean this one is. This is a beauty. This is a 2.2 carat colorless I1 GIA graded radiant cut diamond. The cut is beautiful. And you might see under magnification, a few little specks or white dots or something of that nature, but you won't see anything like a big black crystal reflecting or you won't see any haziness to the stone. So this is also just a really excellent stone for the price. You would save about two to $3,000 on a two carat diamond from going from VS to SI2. And you'd also save even more when you go down to like I1, but you probably wanna focus more on the VS to SI range and don't necessarily get hung up on VVS and flawless. Now, one caveat to look out for with clarity amongst the other things that we spoke about is a hazy diamond. And this is why I'm gonna bring this one out. It's not the prettiest stone. It has a very kind of dull sparkle to it. And it's not because of fluorescence or anything like that, it's because of the clarity. It has a lot of little pinpoints in it, so many clouds that it's not transparent. So the light does not come in and out of the stone. Again, this is not gonna say, say it on the JR report. Websites that you try to purchase from won't tell you this. This is only something that you have to see in real life and someone has to guide you through this is not kind of diamond that we'd actually have in our loose diamond inventory. So those are all the things to look out for for clarity. But remember, you can save big and you can put a lot of money towards a bigger center stone. The next topic on pushing it to the limit is going to be color. And this is a little bit less forgiving and more dependent on your preference and desired shape of center stone. So over here on the color scale of GIA, and we've gone on this on uh, previous YouTube videos, it's graded from D to Z. D is the best means completely colorless and for our purposes we usually stay in this range D to J which is near colorless. Some people actually prefer a warmer stone down here KLM more for antique cuts but for our purposes and the stones that we stock it's 99% of the time going to be J color or higher and a lot of times I color or higher. So unlike clarity there's less variation in the grade and the only really difference is how the shape exhibits that color. So I'm going to take it over here and show you four stones that we have for examples of color. And this is going to be kind of quick because I'm going to show you these three stones just all together. And you can see that they should look very nice and colorless face up. And we have round, cushion, and emerald. Why did I pick these shapes? Because these shapes hide color the best just due to their faceting and all for different reasons. The round, because it has so much brilliance and sparkle, it does hide color well, so you can't really see the color. It also hides inclusions well on that same note. Cushions, because this is a brilliant cut cushion, hides color well, the facets are very large and extended. And finally, we have the step cut emerald, which I'll kind of focus on more here now. And this is actually an eye color emerald. So these are all in the near colorless bottom end of the range, where this stone looks fabulous face up. And I'm gonna take this emerald, which is an eye color, and I'm gonna compare it to an E color. So if you wanna just flip back and remember the chart, E is the second best color. This is lower down, this is the sixth best color. And they should look pretty similar face up and you shouldn't be see too much of a difference between them. Now, how much can you save here? These are both two carats. The price difference is going to be about three to four thousand dollars. It's a nice savings that you can get about 30, 40 percent just by going down a little bit in color. And when you take this away, the higher color and look at that eye color again by itself, it's going to look even better without a comparison right next to it. Now, just to drive home the point a little bit more, I'm going to take an eye color emerald cut. I'm gonna bring back a stone that I had before. This is an F color oval. And oval diamonds show color more, meaning that a color like an F can look like a G and an I will look a little bit lower. So an I color emerald versus an F color oval is a very comparable comparison for color. So remember for emerald cuts and rounds and other shapes, you can push the limit down to I and J color. And other shapes, you can also push the limit a little bit. You want to be a little bit more careful when you have shapes like oval and pear. That's why here I showed you E and F color. Most of our clients want E, F, G, H, sometimes I, but into these other shapes like emerald, 
round and cushion. Clients are very happy with the I and J color. That's why we stock them. They look beautiful finished in rings and they face up very white. Now the next topic we're gonna to talk about here is carrot weight and cut. This is an interesting one because how can you give up a little carrot weight without losing face up size? That might be a question that you might ask. And if you look at the chart here from GIA, it just looks like everything just goes up in the standard size as you increase the carrot weight. But this is not very accurate for the one reason that it depends on the cut of the stone. Now I'm gonna take you back over here to the loose diamonds we prepared. And carrot weight is just a measure of how much when you put it on the scale and it's only suggestive of how big it can look face up. So this is a two carat cushion cut diamond that I picked up from an outside source, something that we would not have in stock. And it's a very deep stone. It's elongated, but it doesn't look big at all. It doesn't look like two carats. It measures 7.3 millimeters by 6.6 .6 as a two carat. That's very undersized for that carat weight. Now, just to drive home the point a little bit more, I'm gonna give you one of our two carats from stock that has a nice measurements and a much better face up appearance. Put them size by size. You can see this stone looks noticeably bigger. It's 7.7 .7 millimeters by seven. So now if these both are two carat, they have the same color clarity, this stone would be a little bit more. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, how do you use this to your advantage and try to save money? is you go for something a little bit smaller and I'm gonna bring out this stone. This is a 1.7 carat or you can do 1.8 and you can just always kind of scale down to whatever size you're aiming for and try to find something that's very well cut and looks bigger than its size. So this is a 1.7 carat D color cushion. This measures 7.5 by 6.5. Now I'm gonna take back this two carat, the deep stone that doesn't look like as big as it should be and I'll put them side by side and you'll see that our 1.7 carat diamond looks like the same size as this stone, yet it's gonna be about a few thousand dollars more because only because this one weighs more. So you shouldn't just pay for carat weight, you have to inspect the stones and this goes for any shape across the board. It's very important about cut, never sacrifice on cut. We'll never tell you to cut corners there, no pun intended, but you should always focus on the measurements and the carat weight is just a guide. So what is better to have this 1.7 carat stone that is about three to four thousand dollars less or just to say that you have a two carat stone but it doesn't look like two carats so you have to think about that or if you want two carats make sure that you get something like this which is a beauty of a two carat and looks bigger than its face up size so always check the measurements check the weight distribution check the fastening make sure everything lines up when purchasing your stone now the last topic we're going to talk about i'm pushing it to the limit is fluorescence and this is a topic that we like to discuss a lot there's a lot of confusion differing opinions on this topic and over here if you just go on ga or all the websites basically what is fluorescence it's when the diamond is exposed to uv light which is not most of the time your diamond is going to be exposed to uv light it's going to fluoresce to a different color most of the time it's blue we would never sell something with yellow or green or orange fluorescence so that's not going to be pretty so this is just strong blue, medium, faint, and none. That's kind of where you want to focus and you can get some nice savings when you get stone with fluorescence. Now I'm going to show you this stone over here. This is a three and a half carat J color VS2 diamond and it has a strong blue fluorescence. Now you would never see that by looking at it with the naked eye and actually here the fluorescence helps the diamond when it does expose to UV light. It's going to make it look a little bit whiter face up. So for IJ colors, fluorescence is actually beneficial. And some people say that for a DEF color, they want to avoid it. But even in that case, you wouldn't even really notice it unless it's exposed to any kind of light. Now, just to back up our point a little bit more, I'm going to take you to the GIA website. This is an independent laboratory. They don't sell diamonds or make profit from them. And I just highlighted one, or one long sentence here. It says, many instances, People prefer the appearance of diamonds that have medium to strong fluorescence. And in rare cases, some diamonds with extremely strong fluorescence may appear hazy or oily. This is fewer than 0.2% of the fluorescent diamonds submitted to GIA that exhibit this effect. So think about that, how rare of a case that is that a diamond that has fluorescence is gonna look oily or milky or hazy. So that's something that we weed out for you. We would never show you a diamond that has this milky or oily appearance to it. And we would make sure that everything looks crisp and beautiful to the eye. And um, just to give you another example, I'm going to pull out two more stones here. One of them has fluorescence, one doesn't. And even to me before, I think I mixed the stones up and it had to take me a little bit of a while to figure out which one was which. But to the naked eye, you'll never see that one is fluorescing and one is not. One is none and one is strong, which is a big difference. And to the naked eye, you'll never see that. Even on the side, it's not going to have like more of a blue color or anything like that. 
it's only when it's going to be exposed direct sunlight or under some kind of uh, UV light at like a nightclub or you know something like that that you notice this difference and it could be a cool effect too as well but you're saving about two to three thousand dollars here this is a two carat stone comparison one has strong fluorescence and one has none and you can get a nice savings now a little fun fact that I like to always point out to people is fluorescence is actually more of a rare occurrence in a diamond so if you're looking for something that's more rare fluorescence is actually something that you can hang your hat on with a diamond they're harder to find and they come at a discount so you're getting two for one special right there and as we noted before we never show anything with orange or yellow or green or any of those kind of colors of fluorescence because then it can really affect the look of the stone so be open to it consider it it's definitely a good way to save as are all the other options that we presented you today so we hope you found today's episode of diamonds 101 very useful and keep in mind all these different factors when shopping for a diamond we talked about clarity pushing that limit color going down to you know i or j color h color not focusing just on def then we talked about the cut of the diamond and finding ones that appear larger than their face is, is showing and finally, we talked about fluorescence and how that really is a non-factor in 99% of diamonds and it's something that's very overstated by websites and different pundits on the diamond world. So always stay tuned. You can always check out our virtual diamond inventory online. You can contact one of our design consultants and we'll be happy to help you find the perfect diamond. And uh, tune in next time. Thank you.